If you've always wanted to get into broadcasting but didn't know how, you're not alone. It's a tricky business to break into. Our station is partnering with the Broadcasters and Sportscasters Mentoring Group to provide on-air broadcast training to a select few. To learn more, go now and grab your free report at getintobroadcasting.com. That's getintobroadcasting.com to discover how you can be mentored by a broadcaster from this station. Hello and welcome to the Valley today. I am your host, Jenna Michael. It is Traffic Safety Thursday on tape. <laughs> Isn't this truly digital? Does anyone use tape anymore? I remember the days when we did. I don't think that they do, although those records. types of items go for good money in some of the online auctions that I watch. So if somebody out there still wants to collect them, even if Look, they're not using them anymore. <laughs> I remember the splice job having to do the Monday morning montage. You name these seven songs in seven seconds that, trying to put those things together. That is one of the things that I am probably the most grateful for coming into radio after that era <laughs> had ended because I wouldn't have had the patience for that. That is just complete and total oh, insanity. But especially when you're like, oh, I missed it by just a little, so you have to recut it. But when you got it right, you'd be, hey, come in here. <laughs> and people would be like, wow. Now you can get your cell phone out and I can do movies. Uh, I splice videos together, and people are like, how do you do that? I'm just like, years of practice. Yeah. The but there's an app for, for it. Yeah, yeah, there's an app for that. People ask me that all the time about editing the show. Have we even introduced me yet? Well, they know who you are. Okay. Traffic <laughs> Safety Thursday. <laughs> Lieutenant Warren Gosnell from the Frederick County Sheriff's Office, which is run by my favorite sheriff, Lenny Milholland. <laughs> who is texting me at the moment, wanting want me to do an update on the social media, so that'll have to wait. Oh, see, that's because he doesn't know I'm here. Otherwise, he'd be knocking on the door because he'd want a hug before I leave. And that may still happen. You never know. <laughs> Someone may tell him, Janet's in the building. <laughs> Look, folks, I'm just going to go ahead and apologize right now. We're going to get to the traffic safety portion of the show. But I've already told Janet, I'm 48 hours away from getting on a plane for vacation. <laughs> and so while you're listening to this, I'm going to be like... I'll say, where are you going to be I'm next Thursday at noon? That. Yeah, but oh, you'll be Thursday, in Vegas. Thursday at noon here will be 9 a.m. there. Oh, that's right. So, so you'll probably be at the, the pool. pool. <laughs> yeah. You start first thing in the morning because it's already 84 degrees. That's true. It gets warm quicker in yeah, Vegas and, than it does here. You don't want to be in the sun too long, even with the 1,000 SPF. And we planned this recording pretty good because we're sitting here on the Friday before Memorial Day. So we haven't even had to deal with any of the Memorial Day fallout. You're not going to have... But what great weather, really? People will be thinking about what was the weather like last Friday. I'm telling you right now, though, beautiful day outside today and yesterday. I had the privilege of going to the Healing Fields of Honor. Over at Hanley. Yeah, we were there yesterday and Lieutenant Governor Winsome Earl Sears. I had the pleasure of escorting her around. We had skydivers coming in from out of the sky. They're like, you have to clear a path here. I'm like, I can only do so much. <laughs> but then when the first guy went buzzing by me, like five feet away from me at 32 miles an hour. You're like, all right, clear ground. this. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, okay, now I see why. Because you're thinking, if anything goes wrong, I'll just tackle him and... No, you don't want to see some little kid or anybody get nailed. But yeah, it was a wonderful event. And I was going to say, if you go out there and see it, but by the time this plays, I guess. By the time this airs, it will have been long taken down. Right. So but next topic. Go back then. on Facebook and look at the photos because there are a ton of photos on yep. Facebook of what it looks like. And it, maybe get involved with it for next year, especially if you have a loved one who served in the military. Might be something you want to do to honor that mm -hmm. loved one. Very special uh, event being put on by the Rotarians of the area. Let's stay on that topic somewhat, do that topic adjacent, because we touched a little bit when we talked last month about Apple Blossom yes. and the different roles that everyone here at Frederick County Sheriff's Office plays during Apple Blossom, from security to traffic to all of the things. When you were at that event, were you there because of being a lieutenant? Were you there because it was a traffic division? Was it security? It was in the city limits of Winchester. So they're the host, but I was there at the request of the sheriff to help keep an eye on the lieutenant governor and also to, to provide any support that might be needed, like clearing a path for the skydivers. Just a helping hand. 
kind of thing. So just an added level of security, but not going overboard. Does that make sense? It does. I wondered when I knew that you were going to do those kinds of things for Apple Blossom because people ask me about reciprocal agreements. I'll use me as an example. I live in Middletown and I am leaving and going down Route 11 and there is a Stephen City police officer sitting in the Middletown Elementary School lane monitoring traffic. How does that work when he's technically in Middletown? It's the same thing, but different. Yeah, and in that specific example, I'm not sure that's still the town limits of Middletown where the elementary school oh, that is. Could be. But with the city of Winchester, our sheriff's office has an MOU, a memorandum of understanding, if I got that correct. <laughs> and we enter into that, which that says basically, hey, the chief of the Winchester City Police Department authorizes Frederick County Sheriff's Deputy duly sworn under Sheriff Lenny Milholland to participate and assist in law enforcement matters within the city limits of Winchester under these guidelines. If I see someone, I'm sitting there at the red light waiting to, to go to court, which is downtown city of Winchester at 5 North Kent, but yet I've got county cases down there right next to the county government building. Mm -hmm. If I'm sitting there and someone blows through that red light as Frederick County Sheriff's deputy under that MOU, I can now stop that person and take the same action that I would if it were in my jurisdiction of Frederick County. So that's how that works. Basically, it bolsters the number of available officers and deputies to take care of matters at hand. In any given area, in the surrounding areas at least. Or if a case of ours. We have a shoplifting and our suspect is in the city of Winchester. We have information on that and we want to go speak to that person. As a courtesy, we let the PD know, hey, we're going to be at such and such address. We either would like to have an officer with us or we don't need an officer with us so we're not tying up additional resources. But they know that we're within their jurisdiction doing law enforcement activity. So that's where the memorandum of understanding. We understand <laughs> that we can do this and this and that you can do this and this and that at either time either one of us can ask for additional assistance if we have something going on. The city has a big event, a big incident that jumps off and their units are tied up with that but they need help now answering their other calls for service. We'll come in and we'll help and that's a two-way street. It's very similar, I assume, to what most of us know that the fire stations do. If yeah. Middletown gets Each a call, way. Stephen City comes and mans the station in case something happens mm -hmm. while they're out on that call. It's a very similar situation. Well, with fire and rescue, they build the level. And I don't know the terminology they use, but you have a level one event that can be handled by just this single company. You have a level two event and you need advanced life support or it's a fire related thing. And now you need an additional bumper truck, you need a tanker, whatever. Now you're calling two units, maybe three. And if it's border on the limits of the city, then we're going to call them in as well. So yeah, it's a mutual aid law enforcement based situation. So that's how we do that. And with Apple Blossom anyway, as you and I have talked, PD's all hands on deck. Oh, yeah. And so they only have a finite amount of resources available to them. And so we come in and try to back up certain areas where it's not a pressing matter, but we need some type of law enforcement or security presence. And it was a relatively quiet apple block. From my perspective, who didn't come anywhere near the city or do anything, but I didn't see anything in the news about a major issue yeah. or any of that kind of thing, which is always good. I heard there might have been a few people drinking, but I'm not what? sure about it. Uh, yeah, not an apple know. blossom. Yeah. <laughs> now, does that same kind of theory trickle down into the Frederick County Sheriff's Office itself. You and I were talking before we started recording. I had someone last week ask me about the difference between the traffic division and the patrol division, and they said, don't they all just do the same thing? Basically, Janet, and I don't want to make it sound too broad, but when it comes to law enforcement within our agency, any uniformed deputy on duty has the exact same responsibilities as any other uniformed deputy on duty. That patch says Frederick County doesn't matter if you're patrol, doesn't matter if you're civil, if you're school resource, if you're traffic, uh, if you're animal control. When the rubber hits the road, <laughs> when it comes down to it, depending on what level of response is needed and how big an incident is, you could be expected to respond and or assist and handle any type of situation. When I say that, we break down the agency into those categories, civil, school resource, patrol, criminal investigations division, and such. And those divisions have a head, which is a captain, mm -hmm. who they report to the major, who is the stopgap before the sheriff. So 
when the patrol units come out on duty, if we're talking about traffic related matters, most of the time their response is going to be a, a see something, do something type of response. Much like what you were saying earlier, they're sitting at a stoplight and somebody blows Correct. through it next to them. Now do something about it. Whereas with a traffic unit, we have someone within a community that says, hey, we have a problem intersection here. I'm afraid a child's going to get hit. It's near the school walking zone. It's a four-way stop, and we have people who are disregarding it. The traffic unit's going to go set up somewhere and monitor that, and that's going to be their assignment. While the patrol unit is patrolling, trying to cover miles around the county, be available for that next call for service within their assigned area, and on top of that, if they see something traffic-related, act upon it. Animal control. You won't believe the number of animal-related calls that our agency handles. And we're coming to that time of year now, and I'm a big proponent about this, and so is the sheriff. On these days where the temperature is above 70, and I'm not saying it can't happen below 70, but when the temperature is above 70, don't leave any living thing in your vehicle. And if you're gonna say, I'll leave the air conditioner running. Folks, we've showed up to cars that are smoking and basically catching fire because they've overheated or unbeknownst, a belt has broken, so the compressor on the AC isn't running, and so whatever you left in the vehicle isn't enjoying refreshing cool air. It's struggling and it's suffering. And and this goes beyond just leaving your pets in the car. I still have a hard time comprehending how anybody forgets a child child is left in the back. It happens, we've seen it, we've read about it. And without judgment here, you've got a million things on your mind, always look in that back seat. I'm with you as a mom, a million things on my mind, the top of that list is always the kit. And I can tell you this, people always ask, can I break the window out? Folks, we don't give that type of legal advice. (laughs) You're a grown man or woman, you're a grown adult, you make that call, all right? That pet looks like it's in distress, and the car is definitely not running, let's say that. The car is running, now we get into a gray area because the AC could be on. Right. You look at the pet, the pet's fine. You're looking at you going, hey, what's up? Yeah, but you just you have know? this moral issue with yeah. an animal being alone in a car without the owner present. But you've got a vehicle not running, windows all the way up. It's an 80 plus degree day, and that animal looks like it's in distress. And you can articulate, because if it's me and I'm in uniform and I bust the window, I'm going to have to articulate why I did it. So exactly. if I can do that... You can do it, but you need to be prepared to answer the questions just I would need to be prepared. One of the first things I check for, okay, is the vehicle running, and does the animal look like it's in distress? And if those two questions are yes and no, then okay, might run the tag, might try to contact the store, see if we can get a hold of the owner. Person says, it's been here a half hour. Again, it doesn't matter how long it's been there. If the animal's fine, and it's, it's running, fine. right? But the longer that vehicle runs, the more likely it is something's going something to go, go wrong. wrong. Okay, <laughs> and that's why even law enforcement canine vehicles now have monitoring systems because these canine handlers they leave their vehicles running with the air conditioner on to make sure that their partner is fine. But on the off chance that something goes wrong, there are monitors in some of these vehicles now that if the temperature gets above a certain level. It pings the phone or pager or whatever the canine officer has to say, hey, Come something's check. wrong here. So nice. That, now, not everyone has that, but that's the extent that they're going to. So a pet owner, a civilian pet owner, may be looking out for their pet and your intentions are great, but if something went wrong with the car, and the only other thing I'm going to add in is because as a security-minded guy <laughs> when it comes to traffic, your car running could be a target for someone to take. Now, you can say, well, they don't have the key fob, so it won't move. All things being equal, you want to roll the dice, roll them. But me, yeah. I'm not leaving my car sitting there running well, while and I'm in the Walmart. Not always does the person who thinks of that as, oh, look, it's a free car. I'm going to bust the window and jump in. They may not necessarily know about key fobs. They assume the key's in it well, because, after all, it's running. And my husband would then say, let them try because the dog will well, tear them apart. Say, but our dogs would lick them to death. So yeah, that I'm would not. Say, <laughs> someone may be like, if they want to get in there with my pit bull, <laughs> good luck to them. You never know what traumatic situation may occur when breaking glass and everything else, the toughest dog in the world may be like, oh, 
and bolt, and they're gone. <laughs> I know, we were talking before. Now your dog's we, running away, yeah. and your car's being driven away. We were talking before we started recording. I was giving you this long list of these videos that I've been watching on Instagram and Facebook, and I've seen those tests where people have, are sitting on the sofa with their dog, and they have somebody come running in the house like they're going to rob them, and the dogs take off yeah. running, and it's a trained German Shepherd or something you would expect to protect you. And, that's and not I'm not going to do that job either. I'm not going to be the guy running in to <laughs> test your dog. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take a break. Yeah. When we come back, we should probably talk a little bit about actual traffic safety, traffic safety yeah. okay. new traffic law. I understand there's a couple of them that are coming in July. We're going to talk about one in particular, and then we'll talk a little bit about click it or ticket and grass in the roadways because it is that season as well. Hi. We are recording in advance at the Public Safety Building. I am here with Lieutenant Warren Gosnell from the Frederick County Sheriff's Office. We're going to come back and talk more with him in just a couple of minutes. Hi, I'm Martine, a senior at Mountain Vista Governor School. Together with environmental nonprofit Sustainability Matters, we're rebranding recycling. Did you know that the rules of recycling vary dramatically by location? Some facilities take glass, others don't. Some take many kinds of plastic, others only take bottles. How can you know how to recycle right? Look for the rules listed on your local recycling or solid waste department's website. For more information on how we're rebranding recycling, Look for hashtag rebranding recycling on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, or visit sustainabilitymatters.earth. Welcome back to the Valley today. I am your host, Janet Michael. It is actually Traffic Safety Thursday with Lieutenant Warren Look, Gutsnow. we were talking about vehicles. <laughs> there were vehicles involved. That's true. We were talking about cars in a random Traffic sense of the safety, word. and we're talking about the safety of pets and vehicles on, on hot days. So, so close enough. We're, we're checking both, that box. We're both animal lovers. <laughs> We're sitting and recording in advance at the Public Safety Building in Frederick County. Our plan, I have a list. We always sit down and yep, go over yep. what kinds of things do you want to talk about. I kind of went off on a tangent. No, I must be already. Yeah, I must already be on vacation and on your vacation yeah. in my mind. <laughs> and you're having a well. good time. I hope you it's, are. The pool is lovely. Yeah, it is. The water's just the right temperature. The beverages. Oh, nice and cool. I'm going to enjoy the zoo. So kudos to there your you wife because I think that was a fantastic idea for you guys to do. But let's talk for a second about wipers in the Winter rain wipers. and headlights. We had a very rainy April and into May, and I lost count, I think, at 12 of the number of posts on social media that I saw where various people were complaining about other people not having their headlights on in the rain. And so I call this a pet peeve law. And I want people to understand a couple of things about this law because the question is, why don't they enforce this? That always seems to be the question. <laughs> now they call the people without their headlights on idiots and other adjectives, but it always comes down to, yeah, but and law enforcement doesn't do anything about it. So explaining a couple things, number one, for this law, this code section, to take effect, your wipers have to be on in a constant motion. If you are using your wipers intermittently, if you're manually turning them off, turning them on every 15, 20 seconds, because it's raining just enough that it's spotting up your windshield, but not enough to leave them on, your headlights do not have to be on. Whether you agree with this, folks, or not. That's what the law that's states, Richmond. the code states. Okay, that's Richmond. That's not law enforcement, that's the legislature. So number one, the wipers have to be on in a constant motion. Now, if that takes place, your headlights are supposed to be on. Why don't the cops pull them over for that? Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the cops can't pull them over for that. It's not and, a primary offense. And when you say, what? You just said it was a law. <laughs> yes, it's a law. But it's a secondary offense, which means they have to be doing something else wrong or have something illegal on their vehicle for law enforcement to stop them to then address not having the headlights on. And you're like, that's the silliest thing I ever heard. I agree. Here's the address, Richmond. There you go. <laughs> but at the same time, it really is about prioritizing safety. Because in the grand scheme of things, I would want you to be prioritizing your time on pulling someone over who is speeding, who has broken equipment on their vehicle, and then saying, hey, it's raining and your wipers were on, but your headlights weren't. To me, that's not as big of a safety issue. But it? here's where it becomes one. You have a light rain falling, and yes, you have to use your wipers. You're in a 45 mile an hour zone, so the road spray and such isn't to a point where it's blinding. 
let's change that to you've got a steady rain not quite a downpour but a steady hard rain okay now number one that takes up visibility of other drivers watching what's going on around them you're on a 65 mile an hour road so now the road spray that's being created by the velocity you're traveling the wind the back force the aerodynamics of your vehicle it's a tractor trailer the mud flaps are missing so now you're talking a totally different thing and it's a two-way road so when that tractor trailer is going southbound and someone coming northbound you can't see them at all and they don't have their lights on and they come over the line a little bit you're doing everything right and now you're in a crash so i see that point of it that if you saw those lights it might give you a second or two to be going oh sh and move yeah. so that's a different beast but now let's put you in that situation again i see that vehicle in that steady rain with all that going on and i pull them over for that now i'm sitting on the shoulder of the road even with blue lights active having this person stopped and i am now running the risk of having someone else come along not seeing me hitting me yes it's part of the job you run risk you got to enforce yeah. the laws but i don't know if that's what the legislature was thinking was like we don't want to create more of a danger right my question becomes then why tie the hands of law enforcement it's either against the law or it's, or not. it's not that's like seat belts you're a grown woman janet you don't want to wear your seat belt that's on you if you get in a crash and you're not wearing your seat belt you have a likelihood of being ejected if it's a severe enough crash and I forget the statistics, but we're in click it or ticket right now, so I've been reading up on it. It's a 50-50 shot at one point about being ejected at certain speeds. Wow. That doesn't mean you won't be hurt. I'm talking about you're ejected you're out of your vehicle. You're leaving the vehicle, yeah. You're still going to be hurt because if you're not belted in and you hit something at 40 miles an hour that's sitting at zero, your chest is going into that steering wheel. Your head's probably going to hit the windshield, so there's still going to be injury but we're talking about ejection. And when ejection happens, you have an 83% chance of dying. There's a 17% chance of surviving an ejection from a moving vehicle. 17%. Correct. Wow. All right? So now, when you start talking about the seatbelt, and I'll get back to my point there, you're a grown woman, you decide not to wear it, that's on you. That's what people want to say. If I decide not to wear it, it, if it's my time, it's my time. Until that guy comes flying out of his car and lands on the hood of my car, who's well, behind him or coming in the other you direction. Crash, <laughs> yes. Right? You crash trying to avoid the body in the road. <laughs> Serious. Yes. I know. I'm not laughing at all. I witnessed a crash on a rainy, icy day many years ago working. I was responding to a crash. A vehicle came around the corner, lost control, fishtails started rolling, rolled four and a half times. On the last half roll, I saw a lady on her hands and knees that this vehicle was about to crush. Luckily, the vehicle didn't finish that roll. And I got out, was checking on her, called rescue, everything else. There's no driver in the vehicle that just rolled. Come to find out, she was the driver. She had been ejected and almost got rolled over by her own, her own vehicle. Car. And I didn't even see her come out. Wow. That's how fast this happens. I didn't even see her come out of the vehicle. So as a grown woman, you want to decide and say, that's on me. No. When they made the law, that now subjects you to wearing it. But then they say, well, you can't stop her for it. It's not a primary offense. So here we are in the middle of click it or ticket, reminding everybody, buckle up. Here's why we're asking you to buckle up. We're not trying to take freedoms away. It's not Big Brother. It's not the government <laughs> trying to tell you how to live your life. It's traffic safety. And you have the numbers to prove it. Yeah, and as the years go by, we're able to mm -hmm. solidify that data. You know, years ago, this first started becoming laws and all. They're like, you have no proof of this. Each year that goes by now, it's like other laws that they make. We're going to find out soon. They've legalized mm -hmm. marijuana. Five years from now, we're going to be able to take data and say, 10 years ago, the number of crashes involving people who were under the influence of marijuana were here. Now that we've legalized it. This is where they are. Yeah. And if it's lower, great. But if it's but not, I don't think it's going to be. I don't think so either. All right. With the seatbelt usage, it's been proven now over time and continues to be proven. So you want to say it's your right, and I hate when people use that term improperly, it's your right to choose whether you want to wear a seatbelt or not. It's not. There's a law and it says that you are required to wear it if you're a front seat passenger, regardless of your age, regardless of your driving experience. But in Virginia, for whatever reason, we've kept it as a secondary law, so I can't stop you for it. But if I see you doing something else, then right. I'm supposed to Or take I come action. through a checkpoint. Correct. You know, because we stop everybody through a checkpoint. Mm -hmm. That's how that bypasses. Because some people are saying, 
It's a victimless crime. Laws aren't made based solely on victims of crime or not. They're made to keep society running in a smooth and orderly fashion, and it's voted on by the people that you've put in office. So when you say, hey, I don't agree with this, I don't agree with a red flag law, I don't agree with the seatbelt law, I don't agree with making marijuana legal, all I can tell you folks is it's not on the law enforcement officer's shoulders. Contact your congressman, Correct. talk to your senator, your local board and of if supervisors. You're not voting, if you're not voting and putting these people in office, then, then have a seat. <laughs> and if you're voting and your person loses, then do a better job, work with them, try to get them in office the next time. I, I'm not going to make this political, obviously. We're running into that season, too. But the bottom line is it's not law enforcement's fault. It's your responsibility, and I was going to do that as a post later today, but <laughs> I guess I still can because this show won't play for a week. That's true. But then yeah, it'll just be a rerun. It's not law honest. enforcement's fault. It's your responsibility, and if you don't like the laws, then get them changed. Don't blame the people who are charged with enforcing the laws. So that brings us back to secondary and primary offenses. We understand, and they're out there, but there's only so much that can be done. You mentioned a second ago having to pull someone over and then the risk that's involved with being alongside the road. That is one of the new laws that's going to take effect in July, Correct. but it doesn't just apply to law enforcement, first responders, tow truck drivers. It applies now Anyone. to me yep. if my car breaks down or any number of things happen to me on the road. If anyone is parked along the shoulder of the road and has flashing lights, four-way flashers, blue lights, red lights, yellow lights, Anyone along the shoulder of the road with flashy lights indicating that there's something going on, drivers are now going to be required in Virginia to move over, just like they're required to move over for first responders right now. I don't know how that's going to play out as far as if you're along the shoulder of the road where you're not supposed to be, because technically on the interstate you're not supposed to be parked on the shoulder of the road. Well, you're not parked, you're broke down, let's say. Right. But let's say you're not broke down, you've pulled off to use your cell phone and you've put your flashers on. No, people do that. There are exits that's, every couple of miles. You're right, really? that's improper stopping <laughs> on the highway. So what happens then if someone blows by you and you want to have them charged for not moving over, but then it's found out that <laughs> you weren't broke down or in distress, you were, yeah. you know? Uh, well, ma'am, how did you get a picture of that car speeding by? I was in the middle of sending a text. That's why I pulled over. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna be looking at it. I haven't read it yet, but that is gonna go into effect at July 1. So hopefully when we do next month's show, We'll have all those. Yeah, we'll and talk about it and anything else. But I think that's going to be one of the more interesting ones. A couple of years ago, it was the hands free when people couldn't hold their phone at all and people were like, oh. <gasps> Now, no one can pass by anybody sitting on the shoulder of the road with their lights flashing. Again, we're going to look into it. We'll see what we can do. And I'll give you options next month. When we know more, we'll be able to give you folks options on what you can do if you're the one that was improperly passed by someone you feel you were put mm -hmm. at risk. Because remember, if it's not witnessed by law enforcement, we're not allowed to do You can't actions. just take my word for some things. But you always have the right to try to seek your own charge. And I can tell you here in Frederick County, if you believe something like that has happened to you and you have the information we need, a vehicle description, at least a vehicle tag, something we can go on, We'll I can come down the, and, yeah. Yeah, and you'll be the one. We'll mm -hmm. serve it after you get it. You'll be the one to go to court and testify, as you should anyway. Huh? So that's some stuff to look forward to. i got to start paying more attention. <laughs> that also requires me to leave my house more often, and I'm not sure I really want to take that. I don't Speaking have of to leaving do that. houses, I'm, the countdown's <laughs> underway. Are we about done? We are down to the last minute and a half, so all, right. all I'm going to do is have you tell people that they can't mow their grass into the road. Yeah, folks, just remember there is a code section. Any type of debris, ejected, placed, dumped, thrown, whatever, in the roadway that creates a hazard to others, whether it be a motor vehicle, motorcycle, a bicyclist, is against the Virginia code. So when you're mowing the grass, if you're blowing it out into the roadway, you shouldn't be too surprised if someone pulls up and says, here's your summons. And it doesn't matter. I was going to go back and blow it back in. Maybe you were, maybe you weren't. But this social media, I don't know if you've heard of it. I, it's caught on. I, I think it's going to be around for a while. <laughs> People take these photos. Everyone has a photo on their phone. They have I a computer have seen, in their hand. And that's why I ask you if you wanted to put it on the list. I know I have seen 15 or 20 photos in my Facebook feed in the last two weeks of people taking pictures of grass in the roadway. I'm like, oh, it's that season again. Yep. And it's a serious matter. We don't see many crashes, thankfully, based on this, but we have had some. And it's not a matter of waiting till the crash happens. Safety over convenience. Correct. <laughs> so shoot the grass back towards your own property, if it means you have to make a couple passes, 
so that the chute is on the proper side. And as far as municipalities and road crews who are doing it, only thing I can say, folks, is I don't know if there are town or city ordinances where these crews are working. I would take that up with the municipality. Your particular locality. All right. All right. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And have a great vacation. I, tomorrow, as people are listening on Thursday, tomorrow, Friday, is National Donut Day. So I will have one in your honor. <laughs> well, then I'm going to have two because I'm on vacation it's and no one will vacation. know. That's perfect. You have a good fancy donut uh, from a whole other state. Yeah. <laughs> I will be back tomorrow for National Donut Day with a brand new episode of The Valley Today ready to go for you. I'll meet Sprinkle. you back here in a few minutes after noon. Wow.